Thank you for coming. The room is crowded. Thank you so much for coming uh, today to the symphony track. So I'm, I'm starting the day with a tour of you know, the symphony components. Uh, don't miss in the afternoon there are much more interesting talks. <laughs> And they are going to go into much uh, deeper details about their components, the components, especially the ones that Drupal uses internally. Um, so, first, hello, I'm Nicolas Grecas. I'm working in Paris, France, for Sensio Labs. I do PHP since years. I'm involved in uh, open source since years also, since the beginning, in fact. And that's how I ended up being a, you know, a core team member in Symfony. I just started uh, working on Symfony three years ago. And so I did some commit and nobody told me to stop. So I continued. And it ended up you know, um, going good and well. Uh, at Sensio Labs, um, I paid job because you know open source contributor is not something that gets more, much money. Um, I work for Blackfire. So Blackfire is a PHP profiler which makes you, uh, gives you code graphs and views, visualization data about how your application behaves. So if you don't know it, if you didn't try it, because it's free also, uh, it's very fun to use. You can zoom in the code graph, you can spot bottlenecks, and you can have much deeper um, insights into your application. It works with Drupal, of course, and with any PHP application. Um, so what is Symfony? Um, Symphony is the reason you had to wait five years to have Drupal 8. Wait, okay, no, um, not exactly. So Symphony uh, gave you um, maybe object-oriented programming, so it's a big paradigm shift for the Drupal community, and um, we are sure it's a good choice. I think now that Drupal 8 is here since a few years, um, you might start and um, understand and get the point about the benefits you get with that. So um, Symfony is really a collection of PHP libraries. Just, you know, you can think of each library, each component as a folder. And in this folder, there are just files, PHP files, and each file is usually a class. And that's it. Each folder, so there are a bunch of them, each folder uh, just solves together a problem. And you can think uh, of them about, you know, as many standalone and independent libraries. So if you want to uh, take only two of them, you can do that. And if you want to use the full stack framework, which is something also we call Symfony, but um, from the core team point of view, this is not what matters most, you know, the full stack experience. Uh, we are really happy to uh, work on standalone components and uh, have Drupal or many other open source projects use them um, just some of them, so they, they do, you know, uh, they cherry picked uh, the one they f that fit their uh, problems. So, um, because we have many components and because um, the core team has some processes I'm going to talk you about, um, I'm very happy to uh, share with you this number. So, uh, it's a vanity metric uh, 1 billion downloads as counting the, counted on packages which is the only counter we have um, to I know, count downloads in the PHP world when people use Composer. Uh, it doesn't mean anything. In fact, how did we achieve and reach this number? Which we cheated, really. So why? So uh, this is the list of the most downloaded components. And this is a real, uh, if you go on uh, symphony.com slash stats slash downloads, you'll see this live counter. Uh, so I took the screenshot this morning. Um, we have almost one million downloads of you know, components every day, uh, which is nice. And these are the most downloaded components. So the first one is the event dispatcher, which you are using when you're using Drupal. Uh, the console one, YAML, you are also using YAML. Uh, the polyfill and string is something you sh nobody should care about, but it's still uh, very uh, useful for people that want portability, you know, uh, so that um, your Drupal works on every PHP system, and so on. So, yes, we cheated, but okay, that's still nice to be, uh, to have something to celebrate and to cut a cake together. Um, okay, so, Drupal uses 100% of this. No, that's not true, 80 either. So, most of them, maybe not. So, yeah, okay, the, 
real number is half of them, which means, okay, you already have uh, many components, about 25 components uh, inside Drupal, and which means also that you have the other half not just sitting there waiting for you to, you know, uh, enable them and download, install, and use them because maybe they fit a problem that you have and you might be solving already using your own code, but better use, you know, code that other people maintain so that you uh, don't have to, you know, to pay uh, and to, to have to take time uh, to maintain that. So that's um, what we are going to, to see together. Um, so, how many of the 26 components uh, inside Drupal are you using? Because, of course, Drupal uses them. And, of course, the core architecture is based on, you know, HTTP Foundation, which is really the core Symfony component that um, deals with the HTTP requests. So everything is based around that uh, in your Drupal 8 code. But maybe for you it's just hidden and you're just you know, using that, and it's really fine. But still, uh, by knowing how to, you know, use them directly, you, may, you might get more uh, power, have more power in your hand, and do more uh, interesting things. It's up to you. So, where do uh, they sit? So, the vendor directory is where uh, dependencies are found uh, in Drupal, but in many PHP projects, in fact. So if you, you can list them just like that. So um, LS, Vandoro, Symfony, and this is the list uh, you might get. Uh, so there's another one which is Twig also. I didn't talk about Twig because it doesn't start with Symfony, but it's still maintained by the Symfony um, you know, team, community. So Twig is kind of Symfony component, but it's just labeled Twig. And it works without any other component, and in this case, of, of course, all of them are kind of, again, standalone. So if you want to have a project without, without Drupal or without anything, you can just select the event dispatcher and deal with events uh, with that component and be done with that. So, okay. Um, Symphony and Composer. So who is using Composer right now? Okay, cool. So you know a bit about it. Uh, Composer, um, okay is the package manager of PHP, of the PHP world. It's the de facto standard that we're using. Composer uh, is, you know, okay. This is Jordi, who is doing the same as his uh, logo. Uh, Jordi, he's uh, the co-maintainer with Nis uh, Enderman of um, Composer, and so uh, thanks to them. Um, so Composer has two main jobs. Um, one of them is, um, figuring out a list of packages and of libraries to install that you need in your directory, in your application. So it means you have a Composer JSON file where you state what you need, and then Composer will look at that and recursively uh, find out the list of you know, dependencies you need. So it does that, that's computing, that's downloading um, zip archives, unzipping them and putting them in the vendor directories. That's one part of the job. And if, when this job is done, you just have this vendor directory that is full of just PHP classes, PHP files at the beginning and mostly PHP classes. So they are just waiting for you to use them. The second part of Composer is the autoloader system. So Composer ships and installs uh, an autoloader, which is a PHP class that is the first class and the first file, in fact, that you include in your project. And this makes available all the classes that are installed in the vendor directory. And that's it. Then it's up to you to wire that together and to have everything, you know, create some experience for your users and for uh, development and adding features then. So Composer is also, of course, a command line tool. So you can use it to list the dependencies. So instead of using ls like on the previous screen, you can use Composer Show. And this will just list you the dependencies you have and the version of them. So this is a screenshot of um, the dependencies of Drupal 8. So again, like before. So now we see that uh, it's on 8.3, I think, Drupal 8.3. We have 2.8 versions of 
all symphony components, uh, except the DOM crawler for some reason. Uh, you have to know that the current version of Symphony is 3.3, and we are uh, about to release in two months 3.4 and 4.0. So 8.4, Drupal this time, 8.4 is already using uh, many components in version 3.2. There are new, com new components that came to 3.3 and that are coming to 3.4, and you can use them even uh, if Drupal uses, you know, uh, old and stable components. Of course, you cannot use, let's say, uh, HTTP kernel, which should be in the list, yeah, because if Drupal needs this 2.8, you cannot use features that are in 3.3 because that would conflict with Drupal itself. But still, you can install more, comp more components and in newer versions, so you have more features and you don't have need to wait for Drupal to use the latest Symfony versions because, you know, that's just standalone components. So, um, Let's start with a few of them. Symfony Debug, who knows about it? Okay, so Symfony Debug is already in the list. If, okay, the list was huge, so it was hard to look at and to get everything, but Symfony Debug is a component that is um, catching errors and trying to get the most out of them so that you can have a better developer experience the bad thing in Drupal is that it's not enabled by default, and the good thing is that you can enable it just in one line. Let's try. So, uh, let's take an example. This is, okay, a blog, um, something, uh, okay, any, any application you'd like to write in Drupal. Um, who can spot the mistake there? There's a mistake in this screen. Can anybody, it's ah, hard to figure out. Yeah? Yes. So we are missing the backslash Drupal. Um, so this is going to fail, of course, because we are in a namespace. And so fortunately, Drupal uh, is displaying, you know, helpful error pages. And OK, just refresh the screen and get that. OK, no, you can do better. You can enable, you know, a logging and things like that. So you can get this page. and. Okay, it's a bit raw. Still, you have the details, and you can, okay, read about that. Maybe you know this page. Uh, you can do better, because if you do that in your site slash default slash settings.php, you can just type debug enable. And debug enable will do several things. One of them is install an error and exception handler so that um, the component will take care of displaying a page that is as useful as possible uh, for you. Uh, it does something else. Uh, it wraps the auto loader. So there is something which is called debug class loader, which is installed uh, in the auto loading system when you do that. And then uh, it will catch you know, typos. So whenever you do some case mismatch typo in your classes, uh, this will spot it, and you won't have, you know, to wait for production because, okay, we created that because we made the mistake of, you know, developing on Mac. This, that's not a mistake, but the mistake is after. Uh, the mistake is you start um, developing on Mac, and Mac has a case insensitive uh, file system, so you can miss typos where um, an uppercase letter is in lowercase in the code and not in the file system and so on. So then everything works because it's case insensitive like on Windows. And then you deploy to production and just it's broken. It's broken because on Linux it's uh, case sensitive. So this will dis catch the error before. So during development it will do runtime checks and it will tell you, okay, no, no. In this uh, file there is a typo. You need to fix that. Uh, so it's free. Use it. So this is the kind of page that you uh, might see if you do debug enable. So there are some fancy CSS, but it's still very raw because we are low level and we don't want, we can't have assets because there is no, you know, uh, server there. We, don't, we cannot load images because we don't know if we have any in server to, uh, to request um, these two. But you can see that uh, if you have X debug and tooling and you can get the details of the arguments, we are improving this page also a lot, so still better. 
uh, with suggestion, suggestion. So if you do a typo, uh, did you forget a use statement? That may be the, the, the hint that will help you save a few minutes debugging that uh, mistake. OK, so that's fixed. Done. Uh, OK, wait. Um, this was, and this is already installed. So, Composer, I'm going to be quick on that because most of you raised their hands, um, but Composer is binary, kind of binary package, so it's written in PHP, but it's usually, if you follow this setup installation steps, uh, it's, uh, you know, packaged, packaged as, as the FAR file, PHAR, uh, AR, and so this is a zip that PHP can execute, and then, okay, you just run Composer on the command line, uh, you should install it if you don't have it. It's really helpful if you're working with a command line, uh, which is really helpful. So, um, if you look at the root composer file of uh, Drupal, you'll find this. So there is no Symfony thing there. It's still your composer JSON file, so you can patch it. You don't have to keep it, you know, uh, unmodified. It's your composer JSON file. Uh, that's what we are going to you know, talk about, adding more things there. Um, how does it work? So Drupal is using you know, these two plugin system uh, that allow to have Composer JSON files uh, in nest nested in directories. So that's how Core uh, ships its own Composer JSON file, and that's how you can create your own Composer JSON files in your models. So then these plugins will look recursively uh, in your application, and they will add dependencies to the list of things to you know, resolve and to be make available for you. And so you'll find this one, for example, and this is where um, the list is. So core composer JSON, so you see the Symfony components, and you see also twig slash twig. And of course, these Symfony com components, some of them have you know, um, dependencies themselves. So this is how the list gets to 26, about. So to um, use Symfony uh, slash debug, you do not need to do that because it's already there. But if you were to need Symfony debug in some <coughs> other application, not Drupal, um, you can do that. You can do composer requires Symfony debug. Let's state the version. So now it would be 3.3, .3, but to be compatible with Drupal, we, are, we need to, uh, to use 2.8. And then Composer will, will do its magic. And OK, there is nothing to install if you do that on Drupal. Still, Composer added this to the list, and it's fine. OK, yeah, just a side note about Composer. Uh, you don't need a new project to use Composer. It's something that uh, is really easy to add to an existing application. So if you have an application that doesn't use Composer and that is in the, you know, the old style way, um, then you can still very easily add it to uh, your application. So you do Composer in it. This will create a JSON file for you. And then Composer require. This will uh, add things in the Vendor directory then it's just up to you to enable that and to add some require vendor slash autoload.php, which is the entry point of um, Composer dependencies. If you need to move forward and to migrate a legacy project to some you know, um, Composer packages, that's really easy and you don't have to uh, do it the old way. Okay, another one, Symfony Finder. Uh, the Finder is a helper to discover files on the file system. Uh, let's take an example. Let's say for some reason, uh, for whatever reason, in fact, you'd like to look for every template uh, nested in any core slash themes uh, directory. This is how you can do that. So you create a new Finder. Uh, you look for files in this Drupal root core themes star templates directory for names for files that end up um, and that match the star.twig, so every twig files that have a size that is higher than one kilobyte, and then you sort by name. So very easily this way you configure how to get a list of files. 
this is recursive, you can put maximum um, nesting limits, you can look for directories, you can look for anything really you can think about, and then you can just display this list of items. So it's an iterator, it implements the iterator interface, so you can forage and get the files one by one and discover that. So, okay, well, what is file? Let's mix uh, things together. So what kind of object or uh, type is file? Is it a string? Is it some object? Uh, yet, uh, I didn't tell you, so maybe you don't know. So let's discover that together. Uh, before, yeah, before just to tell you, the finder works with any stream wrapper, really, that PHP can handle. So this is a, a core system in PHP, in the PHP engine, um, where, okay, PHP ships with a list of stream wrappers that are already there. One of them is FTP, uh, another one is HTTP, HTTPS, uh, so there is a short list of them, and you can create your own. So if you'd like, you can do uh, foo uh, colon slash slash, and then you, want, you can put anything there. So it's a virtual file system bundled into PHP, and this just works fine with a finder also. So if you want to list remote files with FTP, you can do that. You can add password using the URL and so on. Uh, okay, so back to our issue, to our problem. Um, so let's use now Symfony Vardumper. Who is using and who knows about Symfony Vardumper already? Cool. So there is a model which is called uh, Vardumper model. And this is a packaging Vard Symfony Vardumper for uh, Drupal. So maybe you should use it. You'll tell me at the end if you liked it. Uh, so Symfony Vardumper is like uh, Kint. So who is using Kint? Okay, so um, it's a library that knows everything about the type system of PHP. You know, it can deal with recursive things and complex data structures, but also, of course, very simple ones, so that you can uh, then see, see the state of your variables and of your objects and inspect. So it's a debugging, debugging tool again. That's why we're going to use it to, you know, know the type of this file variable. So, back to this. Uh, we added composer requires symphony var dumper, and now we have a dump function. So dump is a plain, raw, flat PHP function that the component creates. Uh, it's not very common to create functions, at least in the object-oriented uh, world, but this is only a debugging tool, so you need to, you know, uh, have things work uh, quite easily. And in the Laravel world, they use DD, uh, or just D, maybe, so it's even shorter to type, and it works the same way. So you should never commit dump in your file if you work with Git, which I hope you do. So, what's the output of this? This will display you this kind of output. So this is in HTML, so we can toggle uh, the SPL file info, so now we know the type of this thing. Uh, it can, it's a SPL file info, which is a type from the, you know, PHP SPL library, which is bundled into PHP. And then it will just show you the state of this object. The nice thing is that, okay, there's this toggle thing, which is nice. Um, it will, uh, it's able also to add, you know, more properties that are things that are not inside, uh, you know, real properties of the object. So in this case, we have the first two rows in white, relative path and relative path named, which are private variables. Uh, I know that because the minus uh, means private. And then we have these purple properties, which are not in the object. They are, you know, virtual properties that are just useful for debugging so that you can read them. And the way uh, you access this information from the SPL file info object is by calling getters. You know, you can do get m time, get extension, get real path, get file path, and so on, get file name, in fact. Um, so we know, and the Vardumper component knows uh, about a lot of different kind of, you know, objects, uh, internal ones, like this one, and also uh, specific ones, um, you know, like the Symfony container, which is the one you're using uh, when you're using, using Drupal. So it knows about Doctrine, if you're using Doctrine, uh, the entity manager, it knows about daytime objects, which need special care when, you know, you want to debug this kind of object. So the community is working hard and providing new, uh, we call that caster, uh, which are, you know, code that knows about a great variety 
of types in PHP and provides nice visualization. So really, that I use it every day. So now we know the type, so let's type in uh, with PHP doc, which will hint you uh, and hint uh, PHP Storm, which is, uh, who is using PHP Storm? Okay, nice, so I'm sure you know about it. Uh, so now we can use that object. So we have file and we can call get file name on it. We can um, use it to display and let's just print the list of files. So this can be the kind of output you might get. Uh, if you, you know, package that in some HTML. Uh, okay, nice, so now we have the twig files in core. Okay, let's do that in the console now. So let's play a bit with the Symfony console. Symfony console is the second most downloaded uh, component, uh, standalone component, so many projects are using just Symfony console without Drupal, without other Symfony components. They just need to create a console command, and this provides everything to parse, you know, the command line arguments and to provide fancy outputs. So if you want to do that, it's very easy. Um, in the afternoon, there was a talk uh, by uh, Jesus Manuel Olivas, who is, you know, talking about Drupal console, and Drupal console is built on top of that. So, uh, let's take an example. Um, this is command.php. This is not Drupal in any way. This is just a command.php file that uh, you can just open, you can copy past the code, uh, so every single, uh, you know, PHP uh, application using Composer should start with this require vendor autoload because that's how we get the classes and the actual implementations there. And then we have this application, the namespace is missing, but you have the application object that you can create, then you can declare what you accept as arguments, so greet, name, yield, and you have, can wire some code, so here it's a closer, and the closer says, okay, hey, name. So you can just run that and say, uh, PHP, run this file, command.php, greet, which is the name of the command, and Ryan, and it can say, hey, Ryan, and if you add the argument, the Yale arguments, hey, Ryan, in all caps. So, yeah, okay, just the important part, you can just register the name, so that's greet, on the previous screen. The name is the argument, so the thing that comes after grid. And then there is this um, dash dash yell, which is an option, it's not an argument, there's a name, a label. So just declaring that, you can then reference them in the body. So we see input, get argument name, and this will provide you what was on the command line. And get option, is it there or not, then if it is, we have the str to upper to yell at you. Cool. So um, the common component, the console component, uh, comes with uh, you know cookies. So this is one of them. You can type just PHP command and not add any um, argument, and then it will by default provide you a list and uh, and helper. So this is just telling you, okay, you can add dash h to get some help, and you can also call greet, which is listed there, but there are two bundled comments, which are help, this one, and list, to list all the comments. Uh, here it would be just uh, displaying greet. So that's, okay, what makes things easy, and you don't need to build that yourself. So uh, let's do uh, the same comment than we did before to mix concept and things together. So now let's create these templates, find Comment. let's add an argument, which is the di directory to look for templates, and let's create the code inside. So we take the code from previous screen and we put it there. So we have a finder, let's create the finder, look for files in this get argument directory. So now it's uh, just a variable. And we can iterate over the finder and display the outputs. So, as you can see in, in this screenshot, uh, I'd like also to show you that there's, there is this, you know, tags, XML-like tags, and this is the way to add colors to the output. So just say, saying this is a comment and this is info, then there is a style, uh, which is, there is a symphony style by, de by default, but you can tweak and create your own style. And with the style, you'll get colors for that, and you'll get nice output like this one. Cool. In a few lines, we just created that, and 
So easy. Okay, there is more. On Symfony Console, you can do more things because, of course, you know, console is not just drawing, drawing you know, raw output and lines. So we can do better. We can kind of create a UI. So we can, in this case, it's a table because, you know, we are listing files and the size of every, every file. So it really, it's a table. In HTML, we would use a table or we could use a table. So um, there's a helper for that. You can create a new table and you can add the headers, so file and size, which are the two columns we need. And then you can iterate over the finder and add rows one by one with this add row and uh, method and call, okay, in the first row we add the command, in the second row we add the info. Okay, and okay, there is another thing there in this screen, so we'll, you'll see the output in the next screen. But uh, I didn't find any other examples. So let's add a progress bar just for the fun of it. Uh, of course, if you have a long-running process and you want a progress bar, so you have a way to make people wait for the output, you can create that. So you create, you create also a progress bar, and let's do some computing. So in this case, it's the slip, which is very hard to compute, and it will take time. That's <laughs> the most important feature of it. And let's advance at every iteration, and this is what you'll get for free. Again, a few lines of code, you wait for the sleep to, you know, uh, wake up, and nice, now you have a table. Again, just a few lines of code. We are in Drupal, so DrupalCon, let's mix that with Drupal. You can do that. So, uh, in Drupal, there is this uh, root and low-level object, which is the Drupal kernel. If you open the index.php file, uh, it's one of the first object, if not the first, that is created when running PHP, and you can do the same in the common. So, um, so let's create a common, some DB process, and we can get and create the Drupal kernel there, a production one, and we can, okay, handle the request if we want, but we can also get the container. So the container is this object that is internal to Drupal and that uh, knows about all the services you have in your application. So there's a big list bundle in, in Drupal of services you can use. One of them is the database. So you can container get database and this will return you and create for you the database object. And then you can use the database as you do usually. So you can, let's query and show tables and let's dump. So in this case, we are in the command line and you can dump in the command line. So dump and var dumper uh, will detect automatic for, automatically for you if you're using the browser. So HTML, JavaScript, fancy things. If not, it will just display you uh, things on screen. So that's the output. It looks exactly the same as before. It's the same color scheme. And now it's in the console and it tells you that if you do uh, some you know, database query, you get a Drupal core database statement, and then there is some state inside. One of them is a query in the web profiler query log, and so on. So you can discover also, with using dump, you can discover uh, how Drupal works internally, just looking at the data structures they use. Cool. Of course, uh, the common example um, is just the entry point. It's up to you then to be creative and to feel the need you have there. Another one, uh, Symfony File System. Symfony File System is a boring uh, class, just, you know, one single class. It's a one class component. And it just provides you helpers to do things with a file system. Yeah, really, it's boring. Um, it's not a file system abstraction layer. So who knows about fly system? Okay. So there is a, a package which is called fly system, which uh, has an object which creates a virtual file system in PHP. It's not stream wrappers, it's something else. So then you can create file system, uh, virtual ones, but have a backend that is, you know, an S3 or an FTP, and you don't care because you just use that object as a file system and it provides you uh, abstraction. This is not what file system provides. File system is just about, you know, creating a directory, this mkey uh, dir, and then, of course, uh, if you want to do that uh, in PHP, in raw PHP, then you have to deal with recursivity, you have to deal with errors, because dealing with errors with a file system API, the PHP API is just 
you know, triggering warnings, and so it's complex to deal with. So this knows about these specificities and makes everything easier for you. So you'll get clean exceptions, and you'll get by default, the, if you want to mirror a directory to another one, you don't have to do the boring work of, you know, recursively going into all of them and copying them one by one, which is what this mirror method does. Um, you can mix, again, things. So let's use the file system, and let's use the finder all together. So the ch mode, so to change the permission of the file, um, of many, many files, in fact, takes an iterator as argument, and then you can use the finder, to, so you create a finder, and you look for files in this uh, directory for files that, you know, start with block, and done. You change the mode of all these block files uh, in this directory. So that's the power of having, you know, standalone components. There is no coupling there, but if you use them together, you have much more power at your hand. Another one, a symphony process. So symphony process uh, just replaces shell exec um, pass through the backtick, um, you know, operators in PHP which you can use and which it uses internally. It uses proc open, in fact. Uh, and, but it abstracts out all the complex things. Because dealing with sub-processes uh, uh, in PHP, but in every language, is something that is hard with a lot of edge cases. So this does the job for you. It provides you a way to you know, call a command so, and also to be safe. Um, so this is. Creating a cose, who knows cose? What does cose do? Who knows that? Okay. So it's, be, it's going to be a surprise for everyone else. <laughs> but, okay, so we have this cose command and we give it an argument. And <laughs> this process uh, object takes an array and it will take care of, for you, um, of you know, escaping the arguments because this is like in SQL, uh, you know, you have SQL injection. In this case, we have the same issue. We have, you know, shell injection that potentially uh, could happen if you are not uh, careful enough. So this will do the job for you. If you provide arguments, common lines arguments in this array in the constructor and you provide them one by one, unescaped, then the process class will do escaping for you. And escaping is something really hard because, you know, on Windows, on Linux, on Mac, it's not the same. So this will just do it. You can forget about what I just said. Uh, if you want to have this process have a timeout, five seconds. So if the mu is uh, lasting for too long, you can just kill the call. And so you can start the process. And you can run it um, in the background, which is what this example is about. But you, when you do start, it just starts. It's non-blocking call. And then you can you know, do other things while it's running. And of course, you can also just uh, process run, and this will block and wait for the uh, output and for the end of the process. So of course, at the end, you can check if it's su successful. You can get the error output, and you can get the output, and so on. So um, I use always that. Again, it's just one single standalone library that does its job very well and in a secure way, which is Again, very hard. So that's the output. So cose is a fancy thing that just takes what you want to. It's an echo with a code that echoes. <laughs> OK, another one, uh, Symfony Lock. So Symfony Lock is not released yet, yet um, in a stable version. It's being uh, released in two months in 3.4, and it allows you to lock. I think so locking means uh, blocking concurrent accesses to the same resource. Uh, the typical use case, one typical because there are several of them, but could be a cron command. So let's say you have a periodic task that is, that, is the, that is running in the background, and let's say you want that task to run every five minutes because that's how you want it to be. But if um, one run of the command for some reason once um, takes longer than five minutes, then you don't want another process, another concurrent command to run also. So you could have this come and get a lock and say, I'm the only one working now. And then five minutes later, when the other one is you know, waking up, it will just look at the lock and say, oh, 
another command is still running, so I'm not doing anything now. Or it could be also be waiting for, so it could be, oh, another one is running, let's wait for it to be over. You have the choice. So uh, that's how you can uh, use it. There are several backends to create the locks, so that in this example, it's a complex one, but it's easy in terms of code. This is using a ready store, so it's a remote um, backend. So if you have uh, several servers, and if you want them to have a single lock uh, source, you can do that, and all the servers that will look for that lock, this sum dash lock thing, um, they will all be in synchronized, and you know, um, only one of them might do the thing you want to lock. So, okay, so you create the register, you create a factory to create the log, you create the logs, and the most important lines are at the bottom, if log acquire, which means, okay, you are the only one running for this log, then do stuff, and then let's release the log, and done, easy. Another one, symphony.env. So, environment variables. Environment variables are the new way. The, it's not that new because, you know, it's like in the 17s. Uh, <laughs> but um, it's new for us, at least as a practice. And environment variables are the way to configure infrastructure-related things. The typical example is the database password. The database password uh, should not be stored in the files of your project. They should not because that's not your job to know the password of your, the database. And that's not the job of your code and not your job to know where, on which IP, on, on which port the database server is listening. Um, so I know that's what we do. We configure Drupal, we configure you know, whatever application, and we code, look there. But the best practice uh, is to uh, let the infrastructure tell you where it is. And this is done through environment variables. So to do that and to deal with environment variables, you need to code your application in special ways, uh, you, especially using you know, this get env uh, function, PHP function, which will do a lookup in the environment and get the variables. So this is the kind of thing you can do to be you know, context sensitive and to have auto configuration by the infrastructure. The issue there, okay, so that's nice, that's the starting point, but that's not over because then during development, um, you want this code to be unmodified. Let's say in development, you don't have any infrastructure. You just have your local machine and you want, you know the password. So one way could be to just, you know, overwrite and replace things in this file, but that's your default file. So maybe better not uh, do things there for development. So the, be the best practice would be to create this dot and file. So dot and it's just a file. And it's not coming from Symfony. The dot uh, file is a concept that exists in other languages. And it's something that the shell should be able to uh, run. So if you do bash dot it will create these variables. So better do source, because this will create variables in the local uh, process. So you can source dot and this will import the values there as environment variables for the current process. Uh, so that's one way to do with this file. So no Symfony, not PHP involved there. You can do automatically this for you. So to do that, you need a parser for this file, a PHP one, and you need to create the environment variable at runtime, which is something that the, the .on um, component does. So again, you can just do that. You create a .on, which is a, the parser for this file. You tell it to load this .on uh, file, and done, then you have these defaults and the get env will get the value from either the environment, the infrastructure, if there is already a variable that has the correct name, and if not, that env will, will fill the holes and provide you the default values or the development values that you put there. You should maybe not use that in production. In production, it's always better to have real environment variables uh, or fast CGI parameters because, you know, you can configure Nginx to push uh, configuration to your application, and this is um, what we're talking about, and the .env component. So .env is even 3.3, but you can use it standalone. There's no dependency. So um, maybe 
I don't know how, it's not in 8.4, but maybe you can uh, reference environment variables in your services.yaml files. So that's something that's possible in Symfony, so there is everything, the code is just sitting there. Uh, it's not in Drupal yet, as far as I know, and uh, this uh, will create a dynamic container so that you won't have to compile the container again to get a new value there. Okay, another one, Symfony Cache. Symfony Cache is about adding cache to your system, to your application. The cache is something, you know, that store pre-computed values and provides them very fast so that you don't have to recompute. It works very, very, very well for, uh, you know, performance intensive task and maybe not that intensive. Uh, so um, the cache component is about implementing something which is called PSR6, which is a PHP standard recommendation. So the interface itself is not invented by Symfony. It's invented by a standard group, the, so it's called the PHP Fig Forum uh, Framework Interoper Interoperability Group, which is a group that created a set of interfaces. One of them is cache, so you get an item from some store you configured previously, you set the value, you save it, uh, you check if it's is a hit, so it, was it found in the database or not, you can delete things and so on. So just use that, again, it's very easy and standalone, you don't need any help from Drupal and from anything to uh, use that. So okay, so there are several adapters, one for APCU for local caching and database, uh, memcache, Redis, if you want to use that, which is a good idea. Uh, it does tagging invalidation, so you can do on your own um, business object tag-based invalidation. Um, you can do expiration, so you can set an item there and it will be automatically deleted after, let's say, five seconds, and, no, okay. Um, Symfony expression language. Uh, Symfony expression language is something that you are already using when you're using Twig. Every single expression you're using in Twig uh, is an expression language thing. And an expression language, the component is about uh, providing you the power of this expression uh, for your own domain. So there's no twig inside, there's only this part. So let's say you want, um, because you know, um, marketing people and you know, the, your product guys, uh, or people want just to have a way to configure things and at some point, you might get bored by having, you know, changing requirements for these kind of details. So you can provide them with expression language. You can provide them a field with a string. They can just type, so it's kind of, they will call that a programming language. And uh, so you can allow them to configure this kind of thing. So let's say if user.group in a good customer or collabor collaborator, then uh, you'll apply some discount, or uh, if some article has more than 100 uh, comments, then it's in, and it's not in category uh, miscellaneous, then promote the article to the homepage. So that's what they would, I mean, they, it's the user side, they would express that using this kind of strings, and you'll do the business logic after. So, yeah, so, it's, so that's how to use it. You create this expression language object, so let's say you have an apple, and uh, then you can just create the language, so the expression is there, and you can evaluate. It's like eval, the PHP eval, except that it's safe. That's the main point of it. And it's, let's say, fruit.variety, and this will return you the variety of the fruit that is passed as a context argument to the expression, which is, you know, it looks like what Twig does, but it returns only the expression, not the string. Um, you can also use that in your routing system. It's already possible right now. So when you create a route, you have this condition entry, and then in the condition, you have you know, the context object which is, which is sitting, and you can do context.getQueryString, and you can check the value, its value, so load equals one. Of course, you can check anything, any, any complex uh, condition on the request and use it. It's already there. Uh, in Symfony, we, the service container allows also to have expression. It's excluded and it's not in the Drupal container because it doesn't work this way. So it's not possible yet. Uh, if you want it, you need to do a pull request. Um, it could be in the future. Okay, another one, property info, that allows you to get, you know, 
uh, details from the type, the doc blocks on every single property of any class. So if you want to do an API and you want to do reflection on some class, a clever reflection that, you know, that is able to read doc blocks and so on, you can use property info. You can use workflow. Workflow is a component that uh, provides you a way to, you know, allow or block transitions. So this is a reviewing system where we have states, which we call places, draft, review, rejected, published, and then you can, you know, create transitions saying, okay, uh, it's possible to go from to review to draft, uh, from draft to review, from review to published, and so on. And then by defining all the transitions and the states of your workflow, so you can think about it as a diagram and a graph, you can just check using this workflow is if some object can be uh, put into, you know, published state or to review state. So that's the programmatic way to do workflow. So you have already workflows, that's the programmatic side you can use in your own business logic. So this can be done in configuration file also. So we have, let's say, Symfony LDAP, Symfony maybe, Symfony image is not merged yet, maybe Symfony UTF-8, so that's the maybe new components. Okay, no. Um, just a few words about them. So, uh, but the release cycle in Symfony we release uh, components every month for uh, bug fixes, every six months for new uh, features. So minor releases, but new features. Every two years, we release a major release. A major release is about removing all the deprecated code. So the next one is in two months, it's Symfony 4, and on the go security releases. Drupal is using now almost the same uh, process, so that's really good because they can, you know, have uh, new features from Symfony regularly and they can drop code uh, at every major release and so on. Um, in terms of maintenance, it means, uh, when a minor version is released, it's usually maintained for eight months. We also have long-term supported versions which are available for uh, more, so 14 months. And, uh, no, sorry, uh, 36 months for the long-term support releases. So the next one is 3.4, and I hope Drupal, and I think Drupal will adopt 3.4 very soon because it will allow them to be stable and to build things on top of all the new features we added there uh, and provide them for you. So, we have a wish, that's why we have these kind of processes, which is to make everything so easy to migrate, to migrate from Symfony 2 to 3 to 4. It works already because, you know, they moved, Drupal core team moved from 2.8 components to 3.2 now, and you didn't notice mostly, so cool. Looks like we made it possible. Uh, so to do that, we use semantic versionings, uh, we, use, we have a backward compatibility promise, so we describe the way we don't break compatibility. We have exactly the same policy as Drupal uh, since a few years more, uh, which is triggering uh, deprecation notices at runtime, so that you know, and maybe the Drupal core team knows also about you know, deprecated path that needs an update. And we have also this continuous upgrade path policy, which um, is a promise to allow you and to create some path for you to migrate progressively one step at a time. So we won't change everything and say, okay, so this is Symfony 4, we break everything, just figure it out uh, yourself. We create step-by-step -step, um, migration. Okay, so Drupal is using Symfony. Are you using Symfony? That's the point you got. So there's Drupal models. You can cherry pick anything you want there. Um, you also have now uh, 50, let's say it's 50, the number is just changing because we have bundles, components, and bridge, and so on. But let's say 50 Symfony components, that's another place where you can find code that might just help you solve your problems. And of course, you have Composer, and Composer means you have a bunch of other components that you can use, and yeah, yeah. be creative. So it's up to you now. Thank you. We have five minutes for questions. If you have some questions, we'd we'll be happy all. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>
not enough time. <laughs> okay, thank you. If you have questions still, you can come to me and you can chat. <laughs>